venous disorders. Venous thrombosis, general principles, types, we have superficial venous thrombosis and deep venous thrombosis, mainly in the calf muscles or iliofemoral veins. Passogenesis, breakouts, triads, 3Vs, wall, velocity and viscosity, vessel wall, damage to the endothelial lining of the vein wall due to trauma to the vein wall, pelvic operations or inflammation near the vein, pelvic sepsis, venous stasis or velocity, prolonged confinement to bed, long trips or cuts, congestive heart failure, venous compression by tumor or pregnant uterus, hypercoagulability of blood due to viscosity through polycythemia or dysfibrogenemia, decreased antithrombin 3, protein S, protein C, antitrepsin or macroglobulins, factor V laden gene defect or activated protein C resistance. Factors which help venous return from the lower limbs are unidirectional valves, negative intrathoracic pressure, transmitted arterial pulsations to the venous comitants, muscle pump which requires strong muscles and intact deep fascia, and then we have superficial thrombophlebitis, etiology, idiopathic, varicose veins, veins cannulated for IV infusion, after injection of irritant drugs such as diazepam, diseases such as burgers, polycythemia, per arthritis and dosa, visceral cancers, take a picture. The vein becomes red, painful and cord-like, mild pyrexia may be present, complications, infection spread and pulmonary embolism. Infection spread, rapid upward spread occurs with the danger of extension to the deep veins through the communicating veins. In this condition, proximal ligation and disconnection should be done. Pulmonary embolism, thrombus is adherent to vein wall due to inflammation. Treatment, these are usually enough for the majority of cases. Compression and anti-inflammatory drugs, compression by elastic stockings or compression bandage, anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin. The following are resorted to under special circumstances such as antibiotics only if there is evidence of infection, anticoagulant therapy, heparin and warfarin in severe progressive cases, ascending thrombophlebitis or if associated DVT is suspected, surgery, prophylactic saphenofemoral or saphenopopliteal disconnection is done if thrombosis is ascending towards the junction with deep system, DVT or deep venous thrombosis, etiology varicose triad plus with C, old age, or contraceptive pills, previous DVT, malignancy, and major trauma, pathophysiology, starts in the calf, venous sinuses, or in the iliac or femoral veins, by adherence of platelets to the endothelial surface, more platelets than adhere, fibrin and RBCs are deposited as layers in between the platelets, giving laminated appearance, when the vein is totally occluded, non-adherent jelly-like propagating thrombus spreads up the vessel as far as the next major tributary, which is loosely attached and can be easily detached, leading to pulmonary embolism. Later on, the thrombus becomes adherent to the vein wall, then organizes and contracts, producing destruction of the, of the valves and luminal narrowing, which are responsible for the post phlebetic limb syndrome. Later on, the process of fibrin lysis and phagocytosis start and lead to recanalization of the vein, but the valves are permanently destroyed. Think of a picture, divided into three groups, classical group, complication group, and asymptomatic group. The classical group, they show pain, swelling and tenderness, pain, aching, discomfort and tightness in the involved calf or sigh, swelling, measuring difference in circumference between both limbs, calf thrombosis limited to the foot and the ankle, femoral thrombosis involving the calf and lower part of the sigh, iliofemoral thrombosis, massive swelling affecting the whole limb, tenderness present on grasping the affected calf or sigh or on compression of the muscles against bones, dorsiflexion of foot leads to pain in the calf, this is called Homan's sign but it's not reliable, and five we have post limb. Complication group we have Phlegmesia alba dolens, Phlegmesia serula dolens, venous gangrene and pulmonary embolism. Phlegmesia alba dolens, massive iliofemoral DVT associated with severe arterial spasm. The limb becomes pale, white and massively swollen with absent peripheral pulses. While Phlegmesia serula dolens, massive iliofemoral DVT may cause severe congestion. The whole lower limb is massively swollen and bluish. If not promptly treated, it may lead to venous gangrene. So we have venous gangrene and pulmonary embolism. Asymptomatic group, silent DVT is a frequent occurrence. There are no local uh, symptoms. Patient may present later with pulmonary embolism or with manifestations of post limb. However, it's suspected by the presence of unexplained rise in the temperature or pulse rate. Investigations, Doppler, duplex and enhanced helical CT. Doppler, 
simple bedside, rapid and accurate in 80 to 85 percentage. Doublex, the standard test for diagnosis of DVT, sensitivity and specificity reach to 90 to 100 percentage. Enhanced helicocity, it can show the thrombus even in small veins. Differential diagnosis of DVT, sprain of calf muscles and hematoma, rupture of plantaris tendon occurring during exercise and can produce one and painful calf, which is usually difficult to differentiate it from the DVT. Duplex scan is needed for diagnosis, ruptured Baker's cyst, lymphatic obstruction, chronic swelling and non-petting, cellulitis, we have systemic symptoms and inflammation, the leg is red, hot and tender. In the classical group, we have pain, swelling and tenderness, but without redness. And then we have the duplex and Doppler findings in normal veins and DVT. Normal veins have normal vein diameter, spontaneous blood flow, normal vein compressibility, non or echogenic material in human, and distal compression augments blood flow, while blood flow with respiration shows phas phasic flow, while the DVT has a dilated vein diameter, poor blood flow, poor vein compressibility, echogenic material in lumen, the subcompression leads to poor augmentation, and blood flow with respiration has no phasic flow. So, prevention of post-operative DVT, it's divided into physical measures and medical. Physical, it's early ambulation after operations and active leg exercises, uh, exercises while in bed, adequate post-operative hydration, elastic stocking support, especially in the elderly, intermittent pneumatic compression, medical prophylactic anticoagulants, low-dose heparin and low-molecular weight heparin, low-dose heparin, 5,000 international years subcutaneously, 2 hours before operation, and then every 12 hours until the patient is ambulant, 5 to 7 days, it decreases incidence of DVT by 50%. Low-molecular weight heparin, more popular because it's given once daily and lower risk of bleeding than the low-dose heparin, more suitable for use at home. Indications, high-risk cases for development of DVT, elderly patients, obesity, history of DVT or pulmonary embolism, major surgeries such as cancer operations, and females on OCPs. Contraindications, large row area is left after surgery, treatment, bed rest and elevation of the lower limb, anticoagulant therapy, thrombolytic therapy, and insertion of inferior vena cava filter, bed rest and elevation of the lower limb, strict bed rest with feet elevated 15 to 20 degrees above the level of the heart, decreases edema and pain, and increases venous return, leading to decreasing of thrombosis. Application of elastic bandage and stocking help venous return. Objectives of treatment in general, prevention of formation of new thrombi, prevention of pulmonary embolization, and decreasing venous valves damage. Thrombi usually take 7 to 10 days to become adherent to the vein wall. Patients should be kept in bed for this period. Usually swelling, pain, and tenderness would have resolved by this time. Gradual ambulation with elastic support is allowed, but standing and sitting with legs dependent are forbidden because accompanying rise in venous pressure aggravates edema and discomfort. These measures are continued for three to six months until recanalization and collateralization develop. Anticoagulant therapy, heparin, given till all signs of active thrombosis subside, which is known by disappearance of pain and tenderness. This, uh, this usually takes 7 to 10 days. Mode of action, enhancement of the activity of the naturally occurring antithrombin 3. Antithrombin 3 with heparin complex neutralizes the effect of thrombin. Heparin alone neutralizes factor 9, 10, and 11. Mild thrombolytic effect and because uh, it causes mild activation of fibrinolysis. Types of heparin, we have fractionated or low molecular weight and unfractionated. Fractionated heparin, such as tenzuparine and enoxaparine. Enoxaparine, 1 mg per kilo per 12 hours subcutaneously. Tenzuparine, 175 international units per kilo per 12 hours, 20, uh, I'm sorry, per 24 hours subcutaneously. Unfractionated heparin, continuous IV infusion, the ideal method, but requires hospitalization and pump which controls the dose per hour. Bolus dose of 5,000 international units is given IV and then a dextrose 5% drip containing heparin is infused at a rate of 20 to 30 international units of heparin per kilogram per hour. So we have average 1,000 to 2,000 international unit per hour for an adult. Dose is monitored by activated partial thromboplastin time APTT, which should be kept between 2 to 2.5 times the control value. More practical but less accurate method of monitoring is to do clotting time 
Bullet therapy, 5,000 international unit administered IV every 4 to 6 hours. APTT is performed 1 hour before every injection until the dose is adjusted. And then we have comparison between unfractionated heparin and low molecular weight heparin. So, the unfractionated heparin, we have mode of action, antithrombin 3, half-life, 1.5 to 2 hours, root, IV, monitoring, APTT, thrombocytopenia 1 to 5 percentage, hospitalization is necessary, but for low molecular weight heparin, mode of action is antifactor 10, half-life is 12 hours, root, subcutaneous, monitoring, factor 10, thrombocytopenia less than 2 percentage, hospitalization can be taken at home. Complications of heparin therapy, bleeding, heparin resistance, and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Bleeding due to overdosage, clinically, subcutaneous bruises, epistaxis, hematuria, bleeding gums, or GIT bleeding. Prevention by proper control of the dose by repeated APTT. Treatment, protamine sulfate 1 mg IV for every 100 international unit heparin. Heparin resistance, mild and requires only increasing the dose. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia 1 to 5 percentage in second week of therapy. Platelet, platelet count drops to less than 100,000 per microliter. For heparin, it should be stopped. Subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin is less likely to cause bleeding. Contraindications to anticoagulant therapy, absolute and relative. Absolute contraindications are hemorrhagic diathesis or trauma or recent operation in the brain or spinal cord. Relative contraindications are major visceral injury, viral area, peptic ulcer, history of cerebral hemorrhage, hypertension more than 180 over 120 mm mercury, and major acute fractures. Or anticoagulants, warfarin, mode of action, it blocks the synthesis of at least four vitamin K dependent clotting factors of somethin 2, 7, 9, and 10, so its effect is delayed and it also decreases the synthesis of protein C and S, which have anticoagulant effect, and so there is a period of relative hypercoagulability during the first few days of warfarin therapy, which should be covered by continuation of heparin therapy together, together with the warfarin for the first three days. And then we have the duration. Oral anticoagulants are given three to six months, which is the time needed for recanalization and collateralization. In some patients liable for Rethrombosis, warfarin is given indefinitely. Administration, basal level of prothrombin time and concentration prior to start of warfarin. Initial dose of 10 mg warfarin is followed by 5 mg daily dose. Discontinuation of heparin after 3 days of overlap treatment. 5 days after the start of warfarin, the prothrombin time and concentration are measured and the dose is adjusted to reach the therapeutic goal of the prothrombin concentration, 30-40%. to 40 percentage. Prothrombin time and concentration should be repeated every two weeks during the treatment course. These tests expressed more accurately by the INR, it should be between 2.5 to 3.5 times the control value. Then we have complications, bleeding and drug interaction. Bleeding treated by decreasing the dose and giving 10 to 20 mg vitamin K IV. In cases of severe bleeding, fresh frozen plasma is given. Drug interaction such as aspirin and NSAIDs. Thrombolytic therapy, fibrinolytic activators such as streptokinase, urokinase, and tissue plasmangian activator. Indications, severe DVT, phlegmesia alba dolens, and phlegmesia cerda dolens. Mechanism of action, it dissolves fresh thrombi, produces rapid clearance of the occluded veins, and preserves the competence and function of venous valves. Complications, severe bleeding, and for streptokinase, it may lead to allergic reactions. Contraindications, old age, ulcer, and history of hemorrhagic diathesis. Effect of these drugs is at its best in the first three days of thrombosis. After that, they have no advantage over heparin. Limit development of post syndrome. Insertion of inferior vena cava filter. Under local anesthesia and radiographic control, the filter is placed by open exposure or percutaneous through jugular vein in the infrarena position. Indications. Contraindication use of anticoagulants or progressive thrombosis or recurrent pulmonary embolism. Complications in less than 5% of the cases. Hemorrhage, migration, injury to IVC and perforation to the aorta. Axillary subclavian DVT etiology. We have primary and secondary. Primary spontaneous cervical rib 
excessive muscle activity of the upper limbs during uh, sports or occupational, compresses vein and costoclavicular space. Secondary, we have central venous gasters, metastatic tumors in the axilla, IV chemotherapy or TPN through upper limb veins, incidence 2 to 3 percentage of DVT, clinical picture, pain, swelling, cyanosis of the entire upper extremity, prominent venous collaterals over shoulder and anterior chest wall, treatment similar to that of the lower limb DVT, and resection of cervical, uh, of cervical rib if it kinks the vein. And then we have pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism, 2 to 3 percentage of all hospital mortalities are due to wholly or in part to pulmonary embolism. Etiology, usually secondary to DVT or other symbiotic in the venous circulation. Pathophysiology, effects of pulmonary embolism occur when more than 25% of pulmonary artery circulation is occluded. Cardiac output decreases when pulmonary artery occlusion exceeds 50%. Underlying cardiac or respiratory insufficiency contributes to premature failure of cardiac output. Decreased pulmonary blood flow results in myocardial hypoxia, pulmonary infarction in less than 10% of pulmonary embolism cases depending on completeness of occlusion and effectiveness of collateral circulation, high ventilation perfusion ratio due to reduced circulation in normal ventilation areas, and decreased cardiac output in leading to systemic hypotension and shock. Unexplained dyspnea or heart failure appearing in hospitalized patient is very suggestive of pulmonary embolism. Take a picture according to the site where the endless impacts, such as small emboli, usually silent, impacted and prefer arterioles, recurrent small emboli leads to, lead to pulmonary hypertension, medium-sized emboli, lodge and branches of pulmonary arteries leading to pulmonary infarction, large emboli impacted in the main pulmonary artery or one of its major branches leading to massive pulmonary embolism. Symptoms, severe precordial pain, chest tightness, marked dyspnea, and severe hypotension with marked, uh, with marked tachycardia. Sudden death may occur. Investigations, for the cause, duplex of lower limb veins for DVT. For diagnosis, D-dimer, elevated in pulmonary embolism and DVT, fibrin degradation product. Blood gases, low oxygen and normal carbon dioxide, ECG to differentiate it from myocardial infarction. Chest X-ray, normal in 50% of the cases. We have diminished vascular markings, prominent pulmonary artery, hilar shadow, enlarged right ventricle, and small pleural effusion. Then, ventilation perfusion, pulmonary isotope scan, V over Q scan, shows lung areas ventilated but not perfused, CT pulmonary angiography, most popular imaging study, non-invasive, and no vascular caster, pulmonary arteriography, abrupt vessel cutoff, or intraluminal filling defect. The disadvantages of this study is dangerous in shocked patients and microemboli may be uh, overlooked. For the treatment, we have mild pulmonary embolism, low risk, no right ventricle strain, heparinization for 10 days, then warfarin, submassive right ventricular strain detected by echocardiography and increased troponin level, massive pulmonary embolism, persistent hypertension, less than 90 mm mercury for 15 minutes, treatment of submassive and massive cases in ICU, oxygen inhalation, cardiac support by dobutamine or epinephrine, pulmonary caster, thrombolytic therapy, pulmonary embolectomy, continuous deterioration after thrombolytic therapy, prevention of recurrent pulmonary embolism by vena caval interruption in first pulmonary embolism in high-risk patients, following pulmonary embolism, recurrent embolism in spite of anticoagulant therapy, and finally, major bleeding complications, anticoagulant therapy is contraindicated. Varicose veins of lower limbs. Superficial veins are dilated, elongated, and tortuous. Types, primary varicose veins, where the cause is, uh, is unknown. Etiology, weak wall theory, and congenital valvular incompetence theory. The weak wall theory, inherited weakness of vein wall, leads to venous dilatation even with normal pressure, secondary valvular incompetence occurs. But for the congenital valvular incompetence theory, positive family history found in 50% of cases of primary varicose veins. Aggravating factors, female gender, marked obesity, high parity, estrogen intake, occupations requiring prolonged standing. Secondary varicose veins, these develop secondary to DVT, arteriovenous fistula, and 
pelvic tumors and pregnancy. Deep venous thrombosis, most common cause of secondary varicose veins, recanalization of the thrombosed deep veins leaves the valves of the perforating veins incompetent, leading to reflux of the blood. This puts unusually high strain on the superficial veins, which have little external support, leading to progressive dilatation. AV fistula, varicose veins are prominent with traumatic or congenital clepal trenoe syndrome, AV fistulae. Arterial pressure is transmitted to the deep system, leading to valvular incompetence and reflux of the blood to, super to the superficial veins, which dilate. Pelvic tumors in pregnancy lead to compression of the pelvic veins. A special note, post phlebitis syndrome, history of DVT, lower leg eczema and pigmentation, leg pain on standing relieved by elevation, lower leg chronic ulcer, leg edema on standing and by the end of the day, small varicose disease of irregular distribution. Symptoms for the varicose veins, secondary or is more than primary, cosmetic disfigurement, dull, heavy, bursting sensation of the leg, usually at the end of the day or on prolonged standing, relieved by elevating of the limbs, mild swelling at the end of the day, particularly with second varicose vein, secondary varicose vein, pigmentation due to oozing of blood in the subcutaneous tissue and deposition of hemocedrin, night cramps, ulceration, and itching. Signs, aim of examination, the anatomical distribution of the veins, Type of varicose disease, whether primary or secondary, competency of saphenofemoral junction and communicating veins, the condition of the deep system of veins, presence of complications. <laughs> Special tests we have multiple tourniquet test, Trindleberg's uh, test, and birth modified birth's test. Multiple tourniquet test, rapid filling in any segment indicates the side of regurgitation, Trindleberg test, it aims to detect saphenofemoral incompetence and detection of incompetence of communicating veins, Perthes and modified Perthes test, detection patency of deep venous system. Patient examined while standing and exposed up to the umbilicus, varicose veins appear as elongated, dilated and tortuous veins. Veins may belong to the long or short saphenous system in primary varicose veins or may be arranged haphazardly in secondary varicose veins. Presence of veins crossing the suprapubic region denotes secondary varicose veins caused by a narrowing of the external aortic vein. Presence of complications such as edema, eczema, hyposclerosis, or ulceration favors secondary varicose veins. Palpation of a thrill over the veins denotes AV fistula. Palpation of thrill over the saphenofemoral junction on cuff denotes incompetent saphenofemoral junction. Complications, edema, venous ulceration, subcutaneous bruises, itching, liposclerosis, thrombophlebitis, chronic leg pain. Subcutaneous bruises due to rupture of small veins as a result of venous hypertension, itching, dermatitis and eczema due to deposition of hemocedrin in the subcutaneous tissues, liposclerosis, extravasated fibrinogen, leads to fibrous tissue and soft subcutaneous fat is replaced by tough fibrous tissue, recurrent superficial thrombophlebitis, and finally, post phlebitic syndrome includes all above symptoms as they follow previous DVT with incompetent perforating veins, hemorrhage, may occur due to rupture of the varicose vein, especially when overlying skin is thin. It can be initially stopped by elevation and compression bandage. Later treatment is by injection sclerotherapy. Comparison between primary varicose veins and secondary varicose veins. Primary varicose veins etiology etiopathic. Pain, slight or absent, distribution along the long or short softness veins, complications minimal or absent. For secondary varicose veins, etiology, previous DVT, AV fistula, pelvic tumors or pregnancy, pain is very marked, distribution, haphazard, veins may cross the groin, complications, edema, pigmentation, eczema, and frequent features, investigations, aim, detection, sites of incompetent communicating veins, and verification, patency of the deep veins, Duplex ultrasound, accurate detection of the incompetent perforators and detection of accompanying deep vein thrombosis in suspected cases. Treatment, primary varicose veins, conservative treatment, reassurance and elastic stocking. Indication, minor cosmetic or spider varicose disease. Injections, clerotherapy indications, small unsightly veins, localized dilated superficial veins, incompetent lower leg perforators. And finally, recurrent or persistent veins after operation. Principal, sclerosis like Material uh, polyducanol, polyducanol, 
should be injected in an empty vein to induce injury of the endothelial layer of the antenna. Compression applied by elastic bandage and left for to six weeks. Then immediately the patient is instructed to work to walk for a long distance in order to flush any amount of the sclerosant material which might have reached the deep veins. Walls of the vein will adhere together, leading to permanent occlusion of the vein, complications, extravasation of sclerosant material under the skin, leading to sloughing of the skin and poor cosmetic results. DVT may occur if a large amount of sclerosant material reaches the deep system, undiluted, so mo no more than 1 milliliters injected at any point, no injection is done for veins above the knee, surgery, Trendelenburg operation, ligation of the saphenofemoral junction, indications, patients with long or short softness incompetence or both treated by saphenofemoral or saphenopopliteal disconnection combined with strapping technique, saphenous vein should be uh, discontinued, disconnected, flush with the femoral or popliteal vein and all tributaries must be ligated and divided to prevent recurrence. The long softness vein is then stripped from above the knee to groin. The leg part of the vein is better not stripped to avoid softness nerve injury. The short softness is stripped from lateral malleolus to popliteal region. Endogenous laser or frequency current used for obliteration of saphenofemoral junction and medium-sized incompetent perforators. Secondary varicose veins treatment, post-phlebetic following DVT, conservative elastic stockings, rarely the varicosities are large enough to require active treatment, verify the deep system is recanalized and then treat as primary varicose veins. Varicose veins complicating AV fistula, surgical treatment of the fistula is usually followed by marked regression of varicosities. If residual veins remain, treat as primary varicose veins. Varicose veins occurring during pregnancy, complete elastic stocking from the toes up to the groin all through the period of pregnancy. After delivery, residual veins are treated as primary varicose veins. Venous ulcers, etiology, post-phlebetic limb due to previous DVT, AV fistula, complications of primary varicose veins, transient and heals rapidly. Pathology, recanalization of DVT is commonly followed by dysfunction of valves of both deep veins and perforating veins. Skin of the lower part of the leg is drained directly by perforators, drain into the deep system, increasing venous pressure, immediate side of the lower one-third of the leg, ulcer bearing area. Combination of venous hypertension, liposclerosis, and eczema leads to ulceration after minor trauma. Local hypoxia due to venous stasis and impaired nutrition, liberation of free oxygen radicals, which are toxic to the tissues. Take a picture, side, ulcer bearing area or around the median malleolus. Skin around ulcer shows pigmentation, eczema with etching marks and induration, plus or minus secondary varicose veins. Ulcer takes long time to heal and liable to break down. Treatment, conservative, indicated for all cases. Elevation of the foot and bed. Ulcer care, moist saline dressings twice weekly. Elastic stocking or crepe bandage. Compression is the most important. Medications to accelerate healing, such as prostaglandin E1 analog, diosmin, and pentu pentoxifilin, pentoxifilin, trentel. Conservative treatment is usually successful in allowing the ulcer to heal within a few weeks. The problem is that once the patient returns to normal activity, most ulcers will recur. If there is evidence of incompetent perforators in the leg, they can be whether injected or exercised. Topical antibiotics shouldn't be used. It may aggravate the condition by inducing allergy, surgical, open or endoscopic subfacial ligation of the perforators are obsolete now and not performed. And this concludes our part for the Venus.